be checking out Megatron vs. Frieza Cartoon Fight Club. Now, this was actually originally supposed to be episode 40, 141, but, you know, it got pushed back. So, enough about me, let's get into this. I'll link the original video down below. If you like this, like, comment, subscribe. Let's rock. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 143rd episode of Cartoon Fight Club. I'm your host, Animation Rewind, and if you're new to this series, be sure to check out the older content. But if you know how the game is played, then let's get ready for the fight. Let's Tonight's go. episode was animated by DZ Browder and Droop the Hedgehog, so if you enjoyed the Two animation, animation head on over to these channels and subscribe. Fun. Speaking of tonight's battle, we have a fight between Megatron and Frieza. And since the Transformers is a multiverse, we are only going to use the G1 Megatron for this episode. G1? With this being said, Please, let's introduce Cartoon Fight Why Club's 143rd round of fighters. Have you ever wondered what makes a villain such a well-written character? Well, for me at least, if they can do things that are so evil that you can't help but to hate them, you got yourself a grade A villain. And I found out that Megatron fits that bill the day I saw him shoot Ironhide dead in the face. Call me a fanboy, but this actually touched a nerve. And worst of all, Hasbro only did it to sell a new wave of toys by killing off the old characters, crushing childhood dreams just for money. It makes you hate Megatron so much that you end up liking him. In case you didn't know, Megatron is the almighty leader of the Decepticons. The Decepticons are the largest political faction on what was once Cybertron. Megatron believes that peace can only exist through tyranny, and that force and harsh ruling is the only way to keep the Transformer race in check. He waged war against the Autobots for believing that freedom is the right of all sentient beings, and in doing so, Cybertron became so war-torn that it was uninhabitable. This forced Megatron and a small fraction of his top Decepticons to chase Optimus Prime and his Autobots all the way to a small planet known as Earth. To prove to you that Megatron is a badass, the guy transforms into a Walter P-38 pistol. This was such a problem that kids in real life would get in trouble for bringing their Megatron figures to school, since the gun looked so accurate to a real Walter P-38. This makes Megatron so bad that he got people in trouble even in real life. I'm telling you, <laughs> this guy is a really well-developed villain. Now, ultimately, hey. this did force Hasbro to have him transform into a jet-slash-tank hybrid, but that's later down the road. Being the leader of the Decepticons is not a role that is given or even promised for life. To earn and even keep your role, you literally need to be the most powerful member out of anyone who wishes to challenge you. Only the stupid and the foolish Decepticons ever dare to challenge Megatron. He's got so all the right great. assets to make him a powerhouse. Megatron's primary weapon is known as the Tetra Singularity Fusion Cannon. This weapon was designed and powered by harnessing a black hole as its main power source. Megatron That's can choose how much force he wants to summon from the black hole, but he has only used its full power once, as it can be very unstable once at full power. Whoa. It's not every day you feel like engulfing entire solar systems with black holes. Megatron even okay. has his trusty Energon mace that burns hot enough to melt steel, and it's powerful enough to damage most Cybertronian armor systems. He can fly massively faster than light, thanks to his luminal space drive, and is one of the most skilled Decepticon warriors. Now Megatron does have his limits, and like many Transformers, he has been killed and revived before. Only two Autobots have ever successfully put Megatron down. Those two being Optimus and Rodimus Prime. Except nobody cares about Rodimus Prime. Overall, Ouch. Megatron is a tyrannic leader of the Decepticons whom is powered by the force of a black hole. He has over millions of years worth of experience and is a highly dangerous opponent. True that. You fail me yet again, Starscream. Get them! 
Speaking of well-developed villains, for anyone who hates Frieza, Frieza, don't forget that Frieza's responsible for every single reason why you love Goku so much as a hero. Frieza can best be described as the most evil used car salesman ever. Now what Just I mean by this is that Frieza's job <laughs> is to sell used planets to the highest bidder. Except Frieza isn't really known for creating or buying planets to sell. Instead, he steals already inhabited planets, commits genocide to every living thing, and then sell it to the highest bidder. So before you buy a planet from f make sure to ask him to show you the Star Fox. Get it? Instead of Star Fox? N no? Okay, let's move on before it gets worse. At his core, Frieza craves destruction, power, and death. He was responsible for the genocide of the San race and many other innocent sentient races. As a frost demon, you would think that it would be almost impossible for someone like Frieza to have this type of power. But Frieza was born mutated and was developed abnormally during his stages of thawing. This gave him abnormally great power in comparison to the entirety of his race. Now compared to say a human, a frost demon is very powerful, but Frieza himself is on an entire new level of godlike power. Just with Frieza's first form, which is arguably his weakest form, he was able to destroy the entire planet Vegeta with just a light touch of ki from his index finger. An entire planet destroyed with little effort from his finger. Moving on from his first form, his power greatly multiplies when entering his second, third, and even final form. Frieza's final form is his most iconic as it's the same form he was born in. When entering this form, all damages received from his other forms are healed, and he is able to reach his full potential. But even then, this form is kinda irrelevant as now, thanks to Ultimate Evolution, Frieza has obtained a new Golden form. Golden Frieza's power severely outclasses any form Frieza has ever had. It's so powerful that it's on par with Super Saiyan Blue Goku and it even garnered the attention of Beerus. Now this form isn't perfect, the fact that it's so powerful comes at a heavy toll. After a few minutes, the intense power can become too much for Frieza to handle which would ultimately burn out his own body if he doesn't manage his power carefully. Overall, Frieza is a tyrannic emperor with the power to destroy planets with ease. He has a golden form that is on par with Super Saiyan Blue Goku and is a true force to be reckoned with. And Here now, that. let's get ready for the Here fight. We go. This battle will I'm take place with on Earth with no win. prep. I'm not Let sure the about, battle you know, begin. Megatron. And again. We'll see. Here we go. Well, shall we begin? Welcome to defeat! Don't play with me, fool! I'll show you hell! You're going to beat me? I am Megatron, leader of the Decepticons! You! Oh, me, sir. Prepare to die! So be it! I'll show you my full power! You're going to beat me? Now then, let me show you the greatest power in the universe! You're blushing! You will never beat me with a puny power like that! And don't you forget it! <laughs> this is just a waste of time, you piece of trash! 
you, you want to say anything in Animation Rewind? Nah. Say congratulations for hitting 300,000 subs. Okay. <laughs> say congratulations. Looks like Freezer won. And it looks like Frieza takes the gold. Now, before we oh, discuss dude. why, I want to give a huge thanks to the animators, DZ Browder oh, and Troop the Hedgehog. Rounds, if you enjoyed what Weird. you saw, head on over to these channels and subscribe. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I am a huge Transformers fan, and I like Megatron far more than Frieza, and I think as a character, Megatron solos Frieza via quality as a villain. But that has no effect on whether or not he could beat Frieza in a fight. As True. much as it pains me to say, but this battle would be considered a spite match. In a fight where only one shall stand and one shall fall, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out that Megatron is simply outclassed in nearly every category. If I am to be generous, I can give Megatron the edges in intelligence and skill being smart enough to hack supercomputers, and having over millions of years worth of experience over sure. Frieza. But when Frieza's overall physical limits far outpace Megatron's beyond imagination, skill and intellect has almost no effect anymore. Without any type of outside help or power upgrade from say a Minicon or Unicron, Megatron only has his black hole at peak for his weaponry. This type of power is really nothing new for Frieza, and Megatron definitely does not have anything new to throw at Frieza. True. Especially not Golden Frieza. And sure, Golden Frieza can only last a few minutes before it starts to burn out, but Frieza would really only need a few seconds, let alone a few minutes, to finish off Megatron in his golden form. Because of this, if you want to see Galvatron take on first form Frieza only, all you have to do is like this video. If this video gets 10,000 likes, there will be a rematch. Also, please comment down your own ideas for future episodes, and stay tuned, because the next fighters are going to be revealed on the next episode of Cartoon Fight Club. Here we go. Let's check out who's here. Wait. Goku? Here you are, Bulma. Who? How do you know who I am? You can't be. No way. Yeah, Goku? Oh. What? Of course it's me. Who else would I be? anything else sorry if i have to end things there but i hope you all enjoyed that one laters